the art of negotiation, how to save money and get the best deals. Ever wondered how some people always seem to snag the best deals? How they manage to negotiate their way to savings and bargains? While you're left wondering if you could have paid less. Well, what if we told you that you, yes you, could be one of those savvy deal snatchers? In today's video, we're talking about the art of negotiation, a skill that can help you save money and secure the best deals in your everyday life. In fact, did you know that an average person could save up to 20% of their monthly expenses with effective negotiation? You don't want to miss this one. Understanding negotiation. Especially when it comes to finance, negotiation is a process of discussion aimed at reaching an agreement. But let's not oversimplify it. Apart from just haggling over prices or trying to get a better deal, it's about understanding the value, both perceived and actual. It's a skill, an art form even, that requires practice and finesse. But at its core, negotiation is a psychological process. It's a dance of sorts, a back and forth between two parties, each with their own interests and goals. And like any dance, it requires balance. Push too hard, and you might come off as aggressive, potentially souring the deal. Don't push hard enough, and you might end up with less than what you could have gotten. That's where the real psychology comes in, understanding the principles of persuasion, the role of emotions, and the importance of empathy and active listening can give you an edge in the negotiations. Like being able to put yourself in the other person's shoes can help you understand their needs and wants better, allowing you to propose solutions that are beneficial to both parties. While we like to think of negotiations as purely logical processes, the truth is emotions play a big role. Believe it or not, being aware of your own emotions as well as being able to read and respond to the emotions of the other party can make a huge difference in the outcome of your negotiation. The key to a successful negotiation. Now we know what negotiation is and the psychology behind it. Let's start the preparation. First of all, you need to do your homework. Research is literally your best friend when it comes to negotiation. You need to understand the value of what you're negotiating for. And we're not just talking about the monetary value. We're talking about the value it holds for you and the other party. What it's worth to you, what it's worth to them. Understanding this can give you a significant advantage in the negotiation. Let's say you're negotiating the price of a used car. You wouldn't just go in there and start haggling, would you? No, you'd research the market value of the car, check for any potential issues or repairs it might need, and then determine a price range that you're comfortable with. That's your target point, the price you're aiming for. But then comes the question, what if the seller isn't willing to go as low as your target point? Well, that's where your walk away point comes in. This is the maximum price that you're willing to pay for the car. If the seller isn't willing to go below this price, then you're prepared to walk away from the deal. It's very important to set this point before you start negotiating and stick to it. Don't let the heat of the moment sway you from your walk away point. There's another aspect of preparation that's often overlooked, understanding yourself. You need to be aware of your own needs, wants, and limits. Ask yourself before going in, what are you willing to compromise on? What are you not willing to compromise on? Understanding this can help you navigate the negotiation and reach an agreement that you are happy with. And of course, confidence plays a big role in negotiation. When you're well prepared, you're more likely to negotiate successfully. You're more likely to stand your ground, make your case, back it, and ultimately get a better deal. Negotiation techniques. Now that we've understood what negotiation is and how to prepare for it, let's talk about the main course of today's video. The actual techniques you can use when you're in the thick of it. First up, we have the win-win approach. Pretty simple, where both parties aim for a mutually beneficial outcome. This approach is particularly useful in situations where you want to maintain a good relationship with the other party. Let's say you're in a job interview and you've just been handed an offer. The salary is lower than you expected. Instead of flat out rejecting the offer, you propose a win-win solution. 
I understand the budget constraints, you say. But considering my experience and skills, could we consider other forms of compensation, like flexible working hours or additional vacation days? This way, you're not just looking out for your interests, but also proposing a solution that could work for both parties. Next, have you heard of the flinch technique? This is where you react with surprise to the other party's offer to make them reconsider. It's a very interesting one, a bit like playing poker. You're trying to make the other party think that they've overplayed their hand. Let's put the flinch technique into a real life context. Imagine you're at a dealership buying a sleek used car. The dealer seeing your interest quotes a high price. This is where you flinch, expressing surprise at the high price saying something like, wow, that's a lot higher than I was expecting. This might make the dealer reconsider their price or offer you some add-ons to sweeten the deal. Moving on, we have the trade-off strategy. This is where you give something up in order to gain something else. For example, you're haggling with a vendor over the price of a beautiful handmade rug. The vendor isn't willing to lower the price, so you propose a trade-off saying, if I buy this rug and a matching throw pillows, could you give me a discount? This way, the vendor makes a larger sale and you get a better deal. Another technique is the silence technique. You know sometimes saying nothing at all can be the most powerful move in negotiation. By staying silent after the other party makes an offer, you're putting the pressure on them to fill the silence, often leading them to make concessions or offer more information. Lastly, there's a famous mirroring technique. This is where you repeat the last few words the other party said, encouraging them to continue talking and potentially reveal more information or make concessions. For example, if the other party says, we can't go lower than 5,000, you could respond with, can't go lower than 5,000? Common mistakes in negotiation. Moving on, let's be honest, even the best negotiators can make mistakes. It's part of the learning process, but being aware of these mistakes can certainly help you avoid them and become a better negotiator. So let's talk about some of the common mistakes you can make. Remember the example of you looking to buy a beautiful handmade rug? Let's take the same one. You've done your research, you know the average price of these rugs, and you're ready to negotiate. But then, you make your first mistake. You fall in love with the rug. Come on, man, it was beautiful. Well, yes, but you let your emotions control the negotiation. You're so enamored with the rug that you're willing to pay any price for it. This is a common mistake in negotiation. It's important to keep your emotions in check and make decisions based on logic and facts, not feelings. I mean, this is not your relationship. Just kidding. After this, you make your second mistake. You accept the first offer. The seller sees your interest in the rug and quotes a high price, and you accept it without negotiating. This is another common mistake, not negotiating the first offer. Keep in mind, the first offer is rarely the best offer. So don't be afraid to negotiate and at least try to get a better deal. Finally, you can make your third mistake. You do all the talking. You're so eager to get the rug that you don't take the time to listen to the seller. You miss out on important information that could have helped you in the negotiation. Remember that negotiation is a two-way street. It's important to listen as much as you talk. Well, that's it for today. Have you used any of these negotiation techniques? Do you have any negotiation stories to share? Or maybe you have some tips of your own. Drop your comments below. Before you go, don't forget to check out our recent video on maximizing your tax refund with six proven strategies. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.